All right. Hello, hello, and a very warm welcome to our webinar today called A Thousand Conversations with Resource Managers, sharing what we have learned from all these conversations. We're very excited to have here uh, today. And my name is Nora. I'm pleased to be your host. And uh, my passion is pretty much to unleash the potential of organizations and people by tapping into the future of work and creating more productive, more soulful, more human and joyful ways of working. I'm very excited and I think we all are to see so many people today uh, joining us for the webinar. Thank you very much for taking the time. It's so wonderful to have you here. And before we actually kick off with the session, we would love to get a sense for who's here today. Um, so I invite you to check in with us via the chat by sharing where you're dialing in from today in the world, so your location, and just one word uh, to describe how you're feeling right now. What are you coming in to the session with? Which emotion, which word? So we've got Canada, Oakland, New Zealand, wonderful. Very early in the morning for you, London. Queenstown, yay. <laughs> Curious. US, Michigan. Austria, that's awesome. My neighbor. Maryland, Indiana. Curious again. Curiosity seems to be a common theme amongst participants. North Carolina, Florida. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's always nice to know who's in the room, in the virtual room with you. Um, so um, before we dive into the panel discussion, I would just like to take a brief moment and introduce this program that you have joined for your benefit so that you understand the context a little bit. So this is the very first webinar we're doing out of our brand new webinar series called LEAP, Igniting the Future of Resource Management. And the goal for this thought leadership program really is to, we call it reinvent the traditional approach to resource management and unpack fresh, inspiring perspectives for the community, for you on how this could look like. So what's in it for you? First of all, we aim to empower resource managers and business strategy leads by sharing really actionable advice that makes you better professionally and personally and elevate the role of the resource management function by increasing also the visibility on the positive organizational impact that resource managers can have in an organization. And by doing that, we also hope to make organizations at a, a large uh, better, exploring the future of work with a focus on resource management so that we can help people free up the time um, yeah, and engage employees in a more holistic way that leads also to better outcomes for everyone. So by running the webinar, um, we are hoping to really help inspire people. And we will be sharing a webinar every month with different exciting topics. And we would like to give you just a brief outlook on what exciting topic is coming up next. Um, in September, we will have the brilliant and inspiring Christine Robinson joining us. She's the Managing Director of Resource Management at Baker Tilly. And the topic we have chosen for this next webinar will be resourcing for success, best practices every manager should know. So um, yeah, feel free to mark that in your calendars. We would be very happy to see you back then. So it's really a webinar program that will be hosting the most inspiring and exciting people, just like Nicole and Tim, which is a perfect segue into introducing our wonderful speakers uh, who are with us here today. So uh, let me introduce to you uh, Nicole and Tim, both co-founders of RUN. And um, there is so much positive uh, yeah, to, to say about the two. Uh, but let me just give you my very personal uh, view on the two. I met them about two years ago. And what connected us from the very get go was a shared mission to really make the world a better place. And um, I can see that 
their passion for solving the challenge of resource management is a very personal one for them that has shaped their own life. And they bring all of that curiosity and passion into their job every day. So uh, yeah, working with them is super inspiring. I'm very grateful. And um, I think you can really feel that um, the way run is run as business is already um, very different to most organizations today. So um, when we talk about the future of work, it's also something very dear and very personal that run is tackling as an organization as well. Also, so I would like to hand over to you, Tim and Nicole to introduce run uh, just briefly. Hey, th th thanks, thanks, Nora. Um, so re really exciting opportunity to, to uh, share a bit about our, our story and um, what we've learned over the, the last uh, couple of, of years. Maybe just starting um, briefly with you know, why RUN as an organisation actually exists in the first place as well in our story. So we're, we're a young organisation ourselves. We're you know, five years in to our journey. Um, but the reason we were founded is um, really re reflections on um, you know, all the co-founders' uh, um, experiences in, in, in previous roles. And I think one thing we all have in common is that we've been involved in a number of you know, quite significant organizational transformation initiatives um, over the prior of 20 years in, in, uh, in our life. And what we had observed was, you know, what are the what are the differences between organizations that can really get it and accelerate quickly and those which have uh, transformation efforts which really fail. And I think that was the lens that we've been looking at, uh, you know, building products and building solutions for, for that problem. And it sort of turns out that resource management is kind of the root cause of a lot of these um, um, problems. Um, and, and, and is also the enabler of, of some really powerful transformation. So that, that's sort of why we are existing and why we as an organization, a bunch of people are focused on resource management. We just believe it is uh, you know, profoundly important for organizations of the future to get right. Beautiful, thank you so much. Uh, for sharing a little bit about uh, RUN with us so that we all know who's facilitating this program. Um, before we dive now into the panel discussion, just a few logistical notes for our audience. So uh, we will dedicate the last 15 minutes to questions and answers. So please feel free. It would be wonderful if you could capture all of your questions um, here in uh, Zoom in the Q&A section. So at the bottom panel, you should see a button saying Q&A. So please feel free to uh, hit that button uh, and submit your questions. As we move along the panel discussion, we will have some time at the end to look at everything that has come together there. Um, and if you have some general thoughts, takes, uh, other insights that uh, the other participants would benefit from, please feel free to use the chat for anything of that sort. And if you would like to get some transcripts, you can also use the CC button to see that. Uh, when you're using the chat, just make sure you're hitting uh, sent to everyone and not just us as speakers so that everyone can see what you're posting there. Wonderful. Uh, without further ado, let's kick off right into the session. We've got a very cool uh, panel discussion prepared, so I'm so happy to share it with the world. A lot of, uh, I think, heart uh, has been put into this. Um, so um, yeah, be, before we dive into the three key takeaways that Nicole and Tim brought to the session, let's just make sure we have a mutual understanding of what we're talking about. So first of all, setting the scene, why are we talking about this? Thanks, Nora. I think, you know, probably this is a, a long overdue webinar on, on our part. So we've, um, as I mentioned before, been going for about five years, and we've had a lot of conversations. And I think, um, you know, every day now, our team is having dozens of conversations with, with customers all over the world. And that's ranging from, you know, small companies to the Fortune 500 to some of the blue chip consulting um, organizations of the world. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of commonality, surprisingly, um, between these organizations. And I think that was something that was initially really surprising uh, for, for me to, to discover just how common the problems we have uh, and we're all trying to solve are just around the world across, regardless of the size of the organization. 
Um, so it's a really, really nice opportunity for us to share some of this. Um, I think that the other um, aspect as well is that resource management um, as, a, as a discipline, um, and I think Nicole's going to sort of talk a little bit about this later, but it's it's a bit of a legacy uh, term and a lot of the material and the communities which exist around this topic are um, you know, quite old school. Um, so, and we've got a slight difference of view on it, sort of making uh, you know, it a bit more human. I think we really want to sort of share that and also start building a bit of a community around uh, uh, that as a, um, a collection of like-minded people. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a nice excuse for us to do that. Fantastic. I'm, I'm so happy you are. <laughs> and uh, just for the benefit of everyone, what do we actually mean when we refer to the term resource management? Um, yeah, first of all, thanks for the, the intro, um, Nora. Um, I was, we're super excited to be kicking off the series with the, the community here. Um, so talking about resource management, as, as Tim already touched on this, um, it's, it's a bit of an old school term and and run. It, it, it's, it's taken us a while to kind of find our place, I guess, in, in that category, because um, for us, really resources are resources are people, right? Resources are not the kind of the, the cocks and the wheels in, in, in a machine, but that's kind of where that term originally kind of came from, right? From, from the manufacturing side where you were looking yes. at kind of and, and the output side. Um, if I'd had to define um, the term, uh, I would say, you know, resource management, it's, it's all about how you uh, deploy your people uh, in, in a way that elevates, on the one hand, um, your business, you know, um, and achieve, and lets you achieve business values and, and, and business and business goals. Uh, and, and on the other hand, also elevates and, and builds and, and nurtures um, all those people in your, in your organization. Often when yeah. we're talking to people or when we, we think about resource management, we, we, we always hear the word, well, is, is it, isn't it just resource scheduling, right? Is it, is it just putting people on, on projects, you know, allocating, allocating the work? And yeah. that's definitely one, one part of the equation, right? That, that's part of resource management, but it, it, is, it is so much more, right? I think um, what we've been seeing, <clears throat> and we'll talk about that a, a bit more as well, is that kind of been, been evolving and, and there is a, a big kind of strategic lens um, to that as well. So um, you need to look at it technically, um, but also strategically. Um, I always say kind of you need to see the forest uh, and, and the trees uh, when you're doing resource management. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Thank you so much for defining that term. And um, so you brought to us uh, some very juicy insights. And who exactly did you talk to, to derive at these, just so we understand where this is coming from? Yeah, so, so th th this is predominantly uh, you know, customers we've been engaging with and um, over the last year. So it's interesting. I know the, the, the title of the, uh, the webinar is a thousand resource managers, but the actual number of people we've talked to is, is vastly higher than, than, than that. Um, the, and I think probably the another thing for us all to appreciate as well is that resource management is, is rare in most organizations that resource manager management is a role in its own right the discipline of resource management affects virtually everybody in the organization because it's sort of it's inherently it's the interface between um delivery and people and that impacts everybody that is your entire business um so a lot of people have got a part to play in resource management and it's really their experiences and their insights that we're sort of trying to bring together today fantastic awesome Kind of a little first insight in in there as well when we actually talk to to people here at run uh, only a very small percentage actually have that title of you know resource yeah. manager um and, and to what uh tim was saying uh we we see people from all areas of the the organization come come to us so it is you know, people with the title of um project manager um business strategy lead cto ceo operational leads from from all levels and, and with all sorts of titles kind of showing that um yeah resource management really is not kind of that uh, not something necessarily that you go out to uni for study and, and then become right. Every, yeah, right um so it is it is very very broad and lots of different people involved in the process yeah, that's already a good insight. Thank you for sharing. Wonderful. So uh, let's kick off. If we can share slide number one with key takeaway number one, that would be wonderful. 
And uh, Nicole, yeah, maybe you want to, to share a little bit about uh, what key insight number one is <laughs> and what you mean by it. So we put on there, it is not just about maximizing capacity anymore. Um, so, so what do we mean by that? So I think, um, and Tim touched on that a little bit already. So for, for I think for a long time, uh, resource management uh, as a discipline was, was very, very much focused on project delivery, you know, um, right. and I've mentioned before, like treating people a bit more like cocks and wheels and, and looking purely at this in terms of utilization um, and how we as an organization can achieve, um, I'd say, efficiency, right? Um, yeah. And it's not, not, not surprising, I think, if, if, if you kind of look back in, in time and where resource management came from, um, looking at the, I guess, the industri industrial age, um, which kind of shaped, on the one hand, kind of what organizations were doing, but also how things, things were done. Uh -huh. um, and, and organizations were, were much kind of designed, again, like to focus on taking inputs, uh, or, or resources uh, in that case, and then maximize uh, the, the outputs uh, uh, on the other way. So, and resourcing was very much uh, approached in then very mechanical way as well. Yeah, so with that, a mechanical way is quite cold and transactional, right? So uh, how does it look like when it's not just about that? What is the other side of resource management that is not so mechanical? So what what I think what we've seen I think it has evolved over the years, um, and and it has evolved since we started um, started run uh, as well. So just in the last few years, I think it has uh, evolved. So um, the organizations that that we work with and that we talk to, uh, we notice that uh, it's not so much anymore about um, you know I've got a project here. Um, and that project needs uh, and say an engineer and I have a person over there um, that person is an engineer and has time perfect you know uh, we'll, we'll put those two together um, again like the organizations uh, looking at this more from a from a strategic lens so you know it's, it's now also about well who's got time and who's got the right skills and the right experiences on on the other hand um, so that, that's that's one aspect. And then specifically over the last, I think, two years, um, we we are kind of moving um, further away from that as well. So it's, well, the, the person might have the right skills, but there might be actually, you know, there's a learning opportunity. Uh, mm. how, can we, how can we make that happen? How can we actually resource in a way that we can, can harness those learning opportunities and set ourselves up for maybe future opportunities, future, future process? Uh, uh, projects in, in that sense. Um, and, and then we are hearing a lot more about um, interests, passions, mm. um, throwing that into the mix as well. So not just about the skills. Um, and as an example, um, you might be uh, maybe in a professional services context, you, you get a project in, it might be a, a new website built for, let's say for um, uh, you know, a, a big guitar manufacturer <laughs> in, in that sense. And you have someone who's very, very passionate about uh, playing, you know, the guitar in their, in their spare, spare time. If you kind of have two, two, maybe two engineers sitting there, one is very, very skilled in terms of the actual implementation and, and the, the skills that are needed, like say a, a Java programming. Um, and the, the one who is really passionate about <laughs> playing the guitar might not have as much of that skill set, but might actually be the better choice because he will be bringing so much more into that project um, for the long term and, and you'll be nurturing um, that person at the, at the same time. Um, yeah. And then... Yeah. But lastly, we've been seeing more kind of cross function, uh, cross functional, cross departmental, um, a skill sharing uh, as well. So again, maybe you have someone in your marketing team with a skill set that is um, that can actually be utilized on a project in the uh, in the IT team. So really, uh, it's not about kind of dishing their work out any anymore. Um, what we are seeing, like for the orgs that are or want to be really high performing, um, they take the people side uh, a lot further and looking at what are people's interests, what are development um, opportunities and, and how can we as an organization make those hours that people spend and work uh, more exciting and, and more engaging. Yeah, wow, that's a beautiful first uh, insight. So from what I'm hearing, um, it is about um, approaching 
people in a more holistic way and not just looking at the surface and the obvious professional skills, but gaining a deeper understanding of who a person really is and what is underneath the surface that might not be uh, as visible in the professional uh, world all the time. Uh, that's very, very interesting. And thank you for sharing those examples with the guitar. I think every musician uh, can relate to that, right? Um, can you maybe share a little bit about um, how an organization uh, would look like that is able to, to do this well? Yeah, I, I can, I, I'll take that one. Um, yeah, I think um, for, I would say kind of a high, high quality, if we call it a high quality organization or a high performing uh, organization, um, I think there is, there is uh, a lot of alignment uh, throughout the business. There are some kind of clear business goals that are, that have been set uh, and that everyone understands. Uh, lots of visibility, um, clear strategy, I think there is there is clarity and uh, visibility over the work over work priorities, um, and I think it's it's uh, the results and the impact of the work that matter more um, than actually just the the throughput side of things. Um, so it's it's more so about you know are we doing the right things uh, yeah. and if we're not doing the right things, having that agility in the business to say like well let's change priorities. Um, if we're just purely looking again at things from an efficiency uh, point of view, you know, efficiency is very much a, a productivity uh, metric. And I always tell my teams here that, well, we can do things, uh, you know, we can very efficiently do the wrong things. Um, <laughs> so it's really the, 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 the outcomes that, that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. That's well put. And um, what, are the differences that you have seen between companies that do recognize, let's call it the human side of resource management compared to those who don't? Yeah, it's a really, really interesting one. And um, maybe if I can just build on uh, the example that Nicole had shared with say, um, uh, uh, the musicians in an organization being put on the music center um, you know, uh, project. What, one of the differences there, and I think this is, really really important as we're moving to more sort of um, distributed workforces um, as, as well as just being good for the world but as the the concept of what is intrinsically motivating to people mm. versus what they're told to do and mm. I think if you, if you sort of step back about what what resource management um, where, where it came from was the idea that I'm your manager I'm going to tell you what to do right. <laughs> and look, it, it works right it works it's an effective strategy but it, it misses the point of um, all the other good stuff that comes, um, you know, can, can come with embracing people as, as the whole person. So yeah. if you are an organization which is able to really understand who is doing the work, why they're motivated to do the work, you don't have to do as much management. And I think that, that that's one of the key things. Like one thing, um, you know, I, I often get asked actually, um, you know, we're, we're a fully distributed um, company, so our staff are all around the world. And the question I, I get asked um, often is like, well, how the, how the, um, you know, how do you manage everybody? And right. I think the answer isn't like, well, you've got to track every hour and cent uh, that gets spent. It's you, you give people work that they care about and they will do the right thing. And I, th I think that, that that's kind of one of the, um, the, the big differences we're seeing between the organizations which are you know, really quite early on the journey. The way they sort of approach resource management is we're going to hand out work to our staff. And look, you've, you've got to start there because if you're not doing that, <laughs> you probably don't have an uh, operating organization in the first place. But where you want to move to is uh, yeah, having people uh, and having an awareness of what um, people want and are driven to do without being told to, uh, to, to do stuff. Yeah. Which is so interesting, right? Because it sounds like a real win-win for everyone, uh, including uh, the managers who are then uh, not as stretched as they are currently because they can let go of some of their uh, current tasks and focus their energy on other priorities. So uh, I'm sure that's uh, also in the interest of managers as well as, as team members as they can mm, find better ways to uh, yeah spend their energy on the things that they feel 
uh, passionate about. Cool. Uh, thank you so much for that first insight. And I just saw that the first uh, question came through, which is a wonderful reminder for everyone to please input your questions there. As I mentioned, we will be coming, we will uh, have 15 minutes dedicated at the end. So wonderful. Thank you for uh, the first question. And please continue to uh, take some questions in the Q&A. Uh, so after that first insight around um, it's not just about maximizing capacity anymore, what's uh, a second um, key takeaway that you have heard by talking to so many uh, business strategy leads and resource managers? That's, that's a good one. So takeaway number two is that resource managers play a critical role in breaking down silos in an organization and they can act as a catalyst of transformation. So what, 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 what do we mean by this is that a, a lot of the, the tension that gets built into organizations is there's, there's two quite different competing forces at work. One is the, the work that needs to get done. And the second one is the people and the capability and the capacity of your organization and how well in sync they are makes such a big difference and that that is both from the perspective of um yeah having a common understanding of what the the plans and the goals are and um and, and secondly just from a systems perspective like if, if you want to bring some just raw operational efficiencies into your business you need to have all these things connected and i think um one of the, I mean, it's, it's, it's cliche, but unfortunately it's still true, is that uh, a lot of dysfunction in businesses comes down to the fact that everybody operates in silos. So you've got, mm -hmm. uh, you've got your sales team or your project management office, and then you've got your uh, delivery teams, and you've got your accounting teams, and you've got your finance teams, and you've got um, your HR teams, your talent teams, and your hiring teams, you know, in, in larger organizations. But these, these, these roles exist, um, even if they're the same person in small companies. And the problem is, is that, a lot of the time they're not connected um like everybody i mean it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous actually it's sort of um just how, how how broken it is in so many organizations um so one thing which you know we're really trying to do and look we, we haven't nailed this fully ourselves yet but we're working on it is how do we build better systems to connect all these departments how do we create alignment um between everybody at, at a systems level um and um I mean just to, to share and this is just a personal example um without sort of uh yes it's a personal example in, in my previous role what would happen is we'd have um a whole bunch of new work which would um come in the door and uh the sales team obviously really excited about the fact that they'd um you know won, won a big new client and they went to hand it over to the delivery team and the the delivery team couldn't do it on the deadlines uh that were you know promised the client and they couldn't do it in the time frame they, they didn't have the cap, cap, you know, capacity and the reason why is that everything had changed in the last week <laughs> since uh you know the project the sales people had connected with the del delivery people um yeah. so that created a problem and then that problem became uh hr's problem because they needed to go and hire people but because there was like disconnection and none of these people had the same um visibility over what was going on with the organization they all were operating in, in silos. And it's kind of problems like that, which, um, you know, are absolutely solvable. And that's, that's something we've put a lot of energy into ourselves with, with our product development is actually just creating a shared plan that everybody can see the knock-on effects for. So you bit of work comes on in the door or is about to come in the door, everybody from, you know, from HR to uh, delivery to uh, sales would know exactly what um, the impact and the consequences of those um you know promising those people promising those deadlines is going to be um so if you if you bring that in that, that that's pretty transformational and what we frequently see when um you know new clients in particular are getting onboarded is that um they have all of this conflict um which they don't actually know they've got it's on on the horizon but once you've actually got everybody start loading their version of their plans into the system uh all these sort of uh things get surfaced so I, I suppose the the, the, the takeaway there really is that um, if you're, you know, there's, there's lots of ways that you can sort of go about sort of doing transformational efforts within your organization. And, um, you know, a lot of them is you get, you know, some inspirational speakers on stage and they'll sort of make everybody feel good for a couple of, um, you know, a couple, couple of hours. 
but then you you hit the operational reality of actually turning the stuff into action and yeah the, 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 this is where a lack of systems will, will break down the organization and um i think you need to solve the systems level um and, and you know th these systems are resource management solutions but once you've solved that that gives it gives you the foundation to actually do the fun stuff to, and to build higher quality organizations yeah, yeah. amazing yeah. And to add that as well i mean having I've talked to to a lot of people and just kind of knowledge this is a really 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 hard environment to operate in and in a hard, yeah. hard uh, to solve because as you know you're sitting uh, especially in the in the resource management you, you're sitting at the intersection of those two very critical business processes mm -hmm. here, here we've got the slide uh, up on here because on the, on the one end you have the the project delivery side which is very um, complicated especially as you're you're scaling as an organization right you've got multiple projects happening that you're delivering for multiple stakeholders in a professional service sense you have clients to thrown in, in the mix as well and and things change all the time as, as Tim mentioned and, and I mean I've worked in project delivery many years before co-founding run and I've never ever in the entirety of my career kind of seen a project kind of start with a specific kind of scope uh, and end with exactly that same scope so things always right so many different levels so it's it's really really complex navigating that and then you throw the people side into the mix right uh and and people are just inherently very complex <laughs> systems <laughs> right? and, and beings right there is there is the, the, the person at work there's the person at, at home uh, as we already mentioned there is kind of people's skills patients interests uh and and a lot changes with people right there there's you know people people get sick people have home lives um, so, so you you're you're navigating that constant kind of intersection of of, of that, and and that's that's really hard. Um, so, and and we we hear that a lot from from the people we we talk to, and we talk to people that are at different I guess stages as uh, uh, Tim Tim mentioned of that kind of evolution. Some kind of approaching things more with a strategic mind and a little bit further down the track. Some 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 are just starting, and and and, and I think it's okay to just um, get started with. Let's just let's just get the the utilization thing sorted first. You know, you, you need to have a first uh, stepping stone uh, uh, to, to get there. Uh, but then, kind of starting to think, oh, how, how can I bring the rest of the organization in? Because because you you need to. It is it is kind of a a, a unified effort. Yeah, wonderful. So what's really fascinating to me uh, from what you have shared is that the role of the resource manager can actually to be an enabler to break down the silos that currently exist in an organization and uh, be that connection point to all the different departments and needs and stakeholder groups. Uh, with that changing role, um, my question to you is, what new skills do resource management uh, professionals require uh, right now and um, even more so in the future? You want to take it to me, shall I? <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe I kick it off. Um, I think, um, yeah, the, the the skills that you were, because you're you're uh, kind of sitting at that uh, very uh, you know con connection um, point. Yes. Um, you really uh, need to be someone who can, uh, you know, obviously a good good communicator, good connector, uh, lots of, uh, you know, I guess em empathy and being able to put yourself in other people's shoes. You'll be dealing with all the different functions, different departments in, in your organization. You need to be able to uh, to have those com conversations. Um, you you know what we've seen as well there is this there's not like a like a people are coming like as i said before you don't go to uni and uh and you study resource management and become a resource manager um we see people come in from all different areas of the business either maybe from the project side maybe from from the people side and um you kind of need that broad um a view of the, the business. I think if, if you want to be successful, um, understanding some of those processes on, on the delivery side, understanding processes on the on the people side. Awesome. And um, I, I just wonder, can you share any example where you have seen organizations really leveraging, elevating the role of the resource manager to be that connector, to be that glue in an organization um, and how that played out? 
Yeah, that, that's a good question. I think, again, like uh, when we're talking about the resource manager, I guess uh, people have probably diff different titles, but there's there's often yeah. one, or one person or maybe one kind of division in, in the company that takes on that, uh, that, that um, responsibility. Um, I, again, I think it's it's kind of like how do you, how do you set up people for for success? Uh, I think in the first place, uh, and I think what we've seen the more successful people or teams have had that mandate um, on from that organizational level, like where the organizations see okay, this is they recognize that um, having good resource management practices is really kind of a strategic effort. It really helps us kind of lead to, you know, get better uh, company outcomes. Um, if, if that mandate is there and, and that, that backing, uh, it, it's a lot um, easier to, to actually, um, you know, fulfill that role and be successful. Okay. In that role. We actually see that, um, in, in some of the conversations that we're having as well, when we're jumping on on demos and going through the sales process, there's, um, you know, some companies that bring in the entire team, <laughs> you know, like, like they they involve kind of straight from the start, like the uh, the, the HR leads, the finance managers, the, and and that's actually really really great. I mean, there's different lots of different perspectives, but you can see, all right, they've recognised that all these people actually play a, a, a key part and need to give some input into into this uh, as opposed to you know things being driven by maybe um say someone from from the project management team comes in because they're trying to they have this this acute problem that they're they're trying to solve and then it comes yeah. comes in from from that side yeah very nice thank you for sharing that example makes a lot of sense awesome uh shall we kick into key insight number three from roads please <laughs> Amazing. So, Tim, so, can you tell us a bit more about this? <laughs> yeah. So, so th this one itself won't be a surprise to anybody. You know, we, we're in a heavily uh, resource constrained environment uh, now, just with, with, with the way that we're, we're working. And I think that that's you know, in, in a pretty stark contrast to uh, how things were, say, 18 months ago. I think the the one of the mo most pressing issues facing uh, many businesses 18 months ago were was you know we can't hire staff uh, fast enough and yeah. now uh, and, and you know that, that was largely a function of there was a lot of very cheap money available and, and that's not the case now um, so this is impacting everybody and I, th I think the the insight and the the, the, the challenge I'd, I'd, I'd propose to everybody when thinking about this is what do you do about this, this reality? And what we're sort of seeing is that there's two strategies that companies are deploying. Um, the, fir the first is a very easy one, which is you work harder, you work, you, you work more hours. And um, that, that is really sort of, um, you know, going back to what people do know that works, um, uh, you know, and, and this is sort of the more industrial age um, mentality, make the machine work right. faster, make it work more uh, and just focus on the throughput yes the the alternative though um and this is the, the challenge I'd, I'd pose to everybody is think about you know use this as an opportunity to um build a, a higher quality organization out the other side because what matters is the output not so much the inputs the inputs are really easy to measure um and, and they do give you a short-term burst particularly if you're working harder and longer hours um, but if you are able to um, take a step back and focus on, um, you know, sort of really sort of aligning the work that you're doing with the passions and the, the things which are intrinsically motivating to your staff, you'll get a higher quality um, organization and probably a, uh, and, and probably more profitable one as well. So just as an example, um, which is worth sharing, I was talking to um, the CFO of a, um, you know, quite a large company. Um, um a couple of months ago and he was sharing a story with me where they had historically been focused on their utilization and this is an you know mature organization about 20 years they've just been focusing on the utilization of their staff and that was the number one driver of and predictor of, of success um, particularly financially and what do they sort of recognized is that the skills that their staff had uh were not the most valuable skills in the market so what they um, decided to do is to 
let go of the utilization targets for a wee while um, and focus more heavily on training and development of the staff. And the sales team, uh, and this is a professional services organization, actively went out and got work, which was uh, for the skill set that this company was developing. And um, the consequence of you know, bringing those two things together, uh, six months of you know, pain, um, you know, it cost a lot of money uh, to, to, to make that sort of transformation. But then when they got, got back, they had lower utilization targets than they had before. Um, but the work that they were doing was more valuable to, to, to clients. So you kind of had this, this really nice sweet spot, which sort of emerged where the company was you know, more profitable and the people were less stressed. And, and the other um, sort of benefit of, of, of that as well is that, uh, and this is just you know, a general sort of resourcing strategy as well. Um, if you're uh, allocating 100% of your staff's time on, on work, you don't have a lot of breathing room for creativity or, or um, you know, just frankly sick leave and things like that. So if right. you've got, uh, if, you, if you're sort of uh, you know, targeting say 70, 80% of planned work and uh, allowing enough space for, um, you know, just work to happen or for things to be a bit more spontaneous, you, you allow for a lot more creativity. And that again, sort of is one of the things that you can do to actually build a higher quality organization. If you trust that the yeah. people are going to spend their time well, um, yeah, you don't definitely. necessarily need to direct every every hour that they're going to be doing. Yeah, yeah. so it asks you to kind of react to uncertainty uh, uh, a lot better as well, right? If you have a bit of um, buffer built in into those targets, um, because otherwise you're just again you're you're reacting, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. If we could just have the slide up with all three key insights at once, I would just like to wrap this section up. So let's let's uh, recap. What have we learned in the past 25 minutes from the two of you? So first, you mentioned it's not just about maximizing capacity anymore. So I think a key takeaway here for our audience, um, if you took one thing away from that section, it might be that there is more to work than just maximizing capacity and focusing on delivery. There's also the human side. So I think think uh, resourceful um, managing um, re resources in the future, um, it will be a lot about getting a better understanding of what people's interests are, what they enjoy doing, the way they want to grow. So combining in that double helix that we saw earlier, the delivery side and the people side, which will in fact make organizations a lot more effective, right? So the capacity will be uh, maximized as a result. The second key takeaway which you shared was resource managers play a critical role in breaking down silos in an organization. They can act as, an, as a catalyst of transformation. So in that section, I think the key takeaway, the call for action was really that the resource manager can be a really helpful enabler for organizations to come together more closely to start communicating and collaborating more closely uh, by being really empathetic, understanding the different needs of the different business areas and helping to build bridges. And the third key takeaway was around everyone is operating in a heavily resource constrained environment, uh, which is uh, largely because of economic reasons. And I think a key takeaway for me from listening to, to the two of you uh, in that section was, it's very easy to fall back into old patterns when things uh, get hard, like in a moment of economic crisis, it would be very easy to go back to the way things used to be, uh, so maximizing capacity and not focusing on the human. And I think by being aware of this uh, human tendency of falling back into old patterns in times of challenges, uh, by being aware of that, we can hopefully, um, as a community of resource managers and passionate resource management enthusiasts, we can uh, prevent this from happening. And really, um, I think our message is to encourage you to keep on um, yeah, uh, fostering the human side in resource management. 
even in this current environment we're in. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that slide. And now it's time for question and answers. So uh, dear audience, I would highly welcome you to uh, take a moment and input your questions. I saw that if you already came through, thank you so much for, for sharing that. This is your unique opportunity to pique the minds of these two brilliant people. So take um, yeah, advantage of that moment. Um, and I'll just kick us off with a question that is really uh, on top of my mind. And maybe uh, we can use that as a uh, introduction to our Q&A. So um, in an organization that evolves over time and um, matures, uh, what impact does this have on the role of resource manager, uh, of the resource management function and the role of a resource manager or whoever fills that role? Can you maybe um, share your insights in that space? Do you want to jump in with some thoughts there? Um, so, so I think if you, if you think about the maturity of, of an organization as, as it goes through this, this um, sort of transformation of adopting resource management, um, what, what it generally looks like at the very start is people are just scheduling time. And that again is very much, well, yeah, I'm your manager. This is the needs of my project. I'm going to find someone who's got the availability and the skills who can do the job. And, and, and that, that, that's the basic version. The, um, the, the more mature version of that is two, two, two things happen. Um, one is that the resource management uh, role itself gets distributed around the organization. So it's not just one person sort of at bottleneck sort of uh, controlling the flow of traffic per se. And more so it's, um, it's about um, people being able to lean in and choose the work or, or, or signal the work that they want to do. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I think that's the the, the the key one. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So actually, as an organization matures, the focus almost uh, increasingly. Uh, moves from solely the delivery to the delivery and people side. So uh, referencing your uh, earlier key takeaway, this is also true for scaling an organization, which that's is interesting. Right. And, yeah, and, and it's something that was, was on the tip of my tongue before, but um, I think what, what one of the, the changes that we're going to see is, is again from, you know, you've got the one side, which is like, so I'm, we represent the organization, we're going to tell people what to do. And there's going to be yeah. uh, another uh, sort of wave, which is coming, which is, as an individual, this is the work I want to do. And yes. you know, the, the, this side by and large doesn't exist in many organizations or it does in a very lip service way. So what, what yeah. we've also seen is people will, you know, you, 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 we have conversations about um, how do you, you know what you pe people want to do? And uh, the, the general answer is like, well, we sit down with our, our managers and we have our performance reviews and we have our sort of one-on-one -on -one chats. And you know the, the, the manager might sort of take a whole bunch of notes about this is the type of work that Nora wants to be doing more of in the future. But particularly in a large organization, unless that manager is the one who's actually responsible for assigning the work, by and large, is just sitting isolated. Like there is zero uh, systems level connection, which means yeah. none of that knowledge gets transferred. And I think one, one of the consequences we've seen of, of this is that uh, a lot of people you know, start breeding a degree of frustration uh, with an organization when, when, when this is going on, um, which sort of does lead to um, you know, resignations and unhappy staff because yes. you've yeah, said yeah. multiple times, I want to be doing more of this work. The person who's assigning the work has got no idea <laughs> that, that, that this is the type of work that you know, sort of Nora wants to be doing. So that connection is never made. And I think, again, this is a systems level problem, but if you, need, if you get both of those data points into your resource management system, it's a very, very easy one to solve. Yeah, and, yeah. and just to say uh, what, what Tim was saying, I think it's all about kind of connections, right? So as the, yeah. the, the organization matures, there there is more and more and more and more more connections, both on I guess the the human interpersonal side. You're just gonna have to talk to new people and, and get things, but also on a when we look more at the systems and application side, um, what we're seeing as well, there's gonna be more and more integration points, and you're needing to kind of flow, you know, data information needs to flow um through the through the organization and not one just system will will, will, uh, will give you um give you that and, and then to add to that i guess the 
if you're a small organization, um, it's some of that stuff still happens naturally and, and you just know, right? Um, I guess we were still at this, we're at this tipping point in run now, right, where we, we're, we're growing. Um, like maybe a, a year ago, I still knew kind of everyone in the, the development team and I kind of knew what their hobbies were and what their interests are and what they kind of want to do. So, so it's easy for me to to um, assign. But as you're scaling and as you're growing, you just don't, don't know that anymore. So you need to start um, creating those connections and um yeah yeah amazing thank you so much um now i would like to dive into the audience questions uh, so thank you um to everyone who um, posted a question there make sure you use the q a and not the chat uh, so that we can collect all the questions there and just as a, a heads up all the questions that we won't be able to answer due to time constraints we will pick up and answer in our follow-up email so absolutely please input your question it will be answered either right now or later on in our follow-up email awesome so i uh want to pick this one um posted by Doug, thank you. If I'm a CEO looking to transition resource management from something in the background uh, to a proactive function in my organization that drives real strategic value, what are some of the key areas of focus for myself and the organization to make that transaction to a proactive strategic approach happen? That's a yeah. That's a that's a a really really good question. I think the first thing I would tell people is just to focus on that alignment piece, uh, and and creating kind of some shared shared kind of goals and, and metrics um, across different functions of the organization. Again, like maybe something from you know, an example from from the past. Um, uh, Tim and I actually used to work together in a uh, in, in in another uh, a life where uh, Tim was heavily involved in the sales organization, and I'm heavily involved in the, in the delivery organization of the of, uh, of the business. And we had uh, as those functions inherently different metrics to report on um, in in the sales function. It's, it's about bringing in that revenue right it, it's it's about yeah. in, in project management or in delivery it's all about kind of delivering those projects uh you know that you know the triangle quality time uh, and all that so you need to bring it in in uh based on those um con constraints but that kind of inherently leads to conflict there already because um if say sales metric is revenue they might just you know and, and they should be selling right that that's the that's their, their job but it might just lead them to selling work um that you then can't deliver because you have all this backlog and it is all coming over to you on the, the delivery side to all right, now I don't even know how to, you know, where, where to start and, and how to. So, so if you can actually find some shared understanding, shared values that you're all working together, because if you actually can time these projects uh, in, in, in a good way and, and put the right right people on there overall for the business, it's actually going to, uh, to be better. I think that the other thing I'll just add to that as well is make this a bottom-up initiative rather than a sort of a, a top-down um and i think that the, the the reason for that is that you want to get the people who are actually sort of managing the day-to-day -day people and the projects you need all of their input you need their perspective on the world at the foundational layer because i think the, the most foundational layer of all of this stuff is just time where is time being spent and you need to know that at a quite a precise level or the, or the intent at a quite a precise level before you get the strategic lens so in terms of where, where to start it's, it's it's not overly strategic on day one it's like get the tactical stuff getting working get a shared plan across the organization create that visibility and alignment and make a conscious effort so that everybody is just all over the operational aspect and once you've done that then you can start getting a lot more strategic about how you um, de deploy this and, and take advantage of it. Yeah, fantastic. And I think we probably have time for one more question uh, to answer right now. Um, so I'm going to go with Miles. Thank you for sharing your question. Um, what are some of the key objections or fixed ideas that you run into when enlightening potential clients on your solutions? Do you have some success stories from before and after such scenarios? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> some of the, the, the key objections. Yeah. Um, because I, I think um, 
I know I, I can jump in. Um, the, what, what one of the, the challenges there is um, just around how you go about sort of um, make, making the change or where, 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 where do you start? Um, a challenge a lot of organizations have got is that there's masses of data and there's also a lot of sort of systems integration which can be done to, to make this more operational. So you've kind of got this challenge of um, you know, getting an initial sort of data set uh, so that you can sort of prove you know, your tools work, that, that that's reasonably straightforward to do, but how you operationalize it, that that's um, harder, um, because that might, what it might mean is um, doing integrations with your CRM tool, integrations with your time tracking tools, integration with your finance tools. You know, there, there, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do to sort of start bringing these, these efficiencies. So I think that, that that's something that... Um, um, yeah, you, you just want to sort of think through, and um, yeah, you know, obviously, if you're a run customer, we, we can um, give you a bit of guidance around how to how to how to how to um, think that through. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, and just a, a success story of one of our customers, which has um, been on this journey. They've been on a journey for two years. I mean, this is, this is, a, this is a large multinational organisation, but it's taken them about two years to fully make that transition from being yeah. starting out with. No systems integration whatsoever, um, but the managing of you know thousands of people, um, and it's a lot of work to sort of uh, organise that without any sort of systems integrations work work done. But over time, they've been, been able to decommission a number of other systems and progressively sort of um, you know build, build their in-house integrations. And I think that that's been you know, massively transformational uh, for for them. Um, but it, but it takes a long time to to, to do it. Yeah. Just, just to, to throw another one in there uh, as well in terms of objections that we're hearing a lot is really around that visibility uh, part and who you actually say when we're specifically talking about run into our system, who do you actually give access to the system, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and our point of view is always like, well, the more people can see uh, the data and have visibility over what's going on, um, the better. And, and um, sometimes we, we see some, you know, huge reluctance uh, on actually giving people access to, to the system uh, and, and the data. Um, and then over time, um, you know, then, then that evolves and, and, and people see kind of what, what value that actually uh, brings. Yeah, I, I think actually that, that's, a, that's a really good point, Nicole. It's, it's um, because what, what, what often happens, um, particularly at the start, is that there's a whole bunch of uh, dysfunction and conflict, um, particularly around sort of people's expectations around time, which is just laid bare. <laughs> and you know what? What what you want to do is how how you, uh, you know you want to sort of get that on there so everybody can see like where where those gaps are, where the problems are, and you want the management to have a safe space to go through and resolve all of that stuff, get the plan clean before it gets communicated and shared more broadly with with the organisation. So, so I think that that's one part of it, and then sort of I think just building on the point um Nicole was making as well, it's about um. At, you know what what signal are you sending when work is assigned to people in the future um is it an indication that this is what you're absolutely going to be doing or is this a suggestion of what is likely to be the, the case and i think sort of a bit of expectation setting um, around that is also um, really useful yeah nice oh thank you so much for for these answers and thank you for the other questions um in the q a they're super interesting uh thank you so much um we will be uh definitely picking up the other questions in our follow-up email um for now it is sadly already the end of our session it flew by um thank you very very much um, both nicole and tim for generously sharing your insights with us today it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I would like to quickly highlight um, our next session. I've already teasered it a bit. So I really hope that uh, some of you might join us for our upcoming session, which will be taking place on the 5th of September with the awesome Christine Robinson. Get excited about that one. Um, she even has a blog, which I would highly recommend called Resource Management in the Wild. Uh, go check it out. And she shares some of her uh, yeah, professional insights in regards to resource management and relates them to the um, personal lives um, and how we can be more wise with uh, yeah, spending our personal resources like time, energy, and money. <laughs> so I already can't wait for that session. And uh, just to check us out, I would love to hear from you in the chat. Uh, what is one thing that you will take from today's session? I'm very curious. Um, please take a moment to share it with us and all of your feedback will um, 
also contribute to our next session. So please let us know what, what are you taking away from today's session? What's been a highlight for you? <laughs> awesome. And while um, we're tuning out, uh, yeah, just again, thank you so much. It's been ex uh, ex incredibly exciting for all of us. Um, thank you very much for being so kind with us and <laughs> joining us today. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, wherever you are in the world. And we really hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.